Welcome back to the Eagles Nest. We're in the second game of tonight's CCAA doubleheader. The Cal State LA men take on the UC San Diego Tritons. If you're just joining us, the Cal State LA women lost the first game of tonight's doubleheader, 68-58 to to UC San Diego. Now the men are on the court getting ready to go. Boy, Cal State LA is coming off a heartbreaking loss last night. Their toughest loss of the year. Losing to Cal State San Bernardino, 67-66 to on a tip-in at the buzzer by Kwame Alexander. There was a shot by Joshua Gooch that was taken with about two seconds left. It was an air ball, and Alexander was right there to just tip it right before the red light went off, and it found its way in the basket. Now, it was close, but it did look like Alexander's tip did count before the red light went on. As you might know, there is no replay in Division II games because most Division II games aren't televised, so there's no way the officials could have checked it. They counted on, on the court, and that's all that matters. With that loss, the Golden Eagles dropped into a tie for fourth place. So that was a critical loss. Of course, they've been on both ends of that one-point decision. They won a game a couple weeks ago by one point over Chico State, 54-53, to after they got a stop in the final seconds. So they've certainly suffered the agony of defeat along with the joy of victory. Now, this UC San Diego team is a very different team than the Golden Eagles have played the last couple of years. You might think with this team coming in, you... Oh, they're UC San Diego. You know, they're a team that Cal State LA should be good for a victory against, but you would be very wrong. UC San Diego, as I said, a much different team. In previous years, previous couple years, they played a lot of close games, and they dropped those close games that they were in, always in, and they would end up finishing near the bottom of the conference. But this year has been a very different story. After starting out the year going 1-7, and seven, they have figured things out. They've won six of their last eight games. They're one of the hottest teams in the CCAA. That, in those six wins, are wins over Chico State and Cal State Monterey Bay in close games. So they figure out how to win close games, too. They also beat Cal State Dominguez Hills last night, 69-62. They're 4-1 and one on a school record long six-game conference road trip. And that road trip ends with tonight's game here at the Eagles Nest. So they're going to have a very favorable home schedule to finish their year. Of course, the Golden Eagles are on their own six-game homestand right now that they finish up tonight. Cal State LA on that homestand after last night's tough loss is three and two. Looking to get a win here tonight before they finish with six of their final eight games on the road. So let's get to the starting lineups for this one before we talk more about this game. First for UC San Diego. They're not quite as tall a team as Cal State San Bernardino last night. They don't have any starter over 6'6". So it's a bit of a different style here tonight. They start at one guard spot, number 10, James McCann, a 5'11 junior from Carlsbad. Starting at another guard spot is number 25, Ryan Peters, a 6'4 senior from Santa Clarita. They have some familiar names because they have a couple players that have been on this roster for a couple of years and have been used to playing together. And one of them, number 12, is Tyler McGrath, a 6'2 senior from Camarillo. He is the third leading scorer, excuse me, second leading scorer in the CCAA. And he's a very good three-point shooter and a great all-around player. Starting at the forward spot is number 14, Drew Dyer, 6'6 freshman from Aurora, Colorado. He's one of the newcomers for the Tritons. And starting at the other forward spot is number 30, Colin Porter, 6'6 senior from San Diego. Chris Carlson is the head coach in his sixth year with the Tritons with a 71-83 and record. In Carlson's past, he was an assistant under Ben Howland, of course, who's now the head coach at UCLA. But he was with Ben Howland at UCLA, Pittsburgh, and Northern Arizona. So he has a long history with the UCLA coach as an assistant, but he is leading his team now to quite a turnaround this year. His assistants are Eric Olson and Jared Link. For Cal State LA, they're going with the same lineup that they had last night. A bigger starting lineup, so this should be interesting. They have number one, Josh Munzen at one guard, 6'2 freshman from Long Beach. Starting at the other guard spot is number 40, Julian Camper. Excuse me, starting at the other guard spot, at the forward spot is Julian Camper, 6'4", junior from Long Beach. As I said last night, the Golden Eagles going with a three forward starting lineup and one guard. So that's that bigger lineup. Starting at the other forward spot is number 10, Solomon Singer, 6'5", junior from Santa Monica. And starting at the third forward spot is number three, James Tillman, 6'6", junior from Oakland. The Golden Eagles leading scorer on the year and the third leading scorer in the conference. Starting at the center spot, number 23, Jordan Richard, 6'9", senior from Rancho Cucamonga. Stephen Thompson, the head coach of the Golden Eagles, with a record of 105 and 104 in his eighth year. Dane Suttle is his assistant. If you weren't with us last night, Jordan Richard set a school record by blocking four shots. He 
He now has 77 blocks on the year. That's an all-time school record. That passes his own mark from last year. He set the school record with 75 last year. He already surpassed that in just 17 games this year. So whatever he gets from this point on will add to that school record. He's second on the all-time block shot record list. I don't believe he will have a chance to catch the all-time leader in block shots, but he has certainly made a name for himself here with blocking shots for the Golden Eagles. The block shots record, by the way, is 264 by Tony Brown from 1983 to 86. So as the lineups are getting underway now, UC San Diego, as I mentioned, among other things, they're a great free throw shooting team. They shoot 76% on the year, so don't want to get them to the free throw line. That's first in the conference by a mile. That's more than five percentage points better than anyone else. But they don't score very much because what the way they play is kind of a half court offense. They really run their offense. They're only 10th in scoring. They are sixth in the conference though in points allowed. But as I said, they try to limit possessions and they run the shot clock down a lot of times before they shoot. Of course, in this winning streak, they have so scored some points in a couple games, including 85 points against Sonoma State. So they can score. But we'll see how the pace of this game goes. I know when Cal State LA has had trouble, it's been standing around in a half-court offense and passing the ball around without much movement. So we'll see if the Golden Eagles might try to push the pace a little bit at times. That's where they found success last night against Cal State San Bernardino was pushing the pace off of the long misses for, for the Coyotes and it got them easy baskets in transition and they, that's why they led most of that game. Boy, it was a real crime that the Golden Eagles didn't win that game. They deserved to win that game. They were ahead for almost the whole way and they had several chances to put the game away including a play with 11 seconds left where James Tillman was at the line. He made a free throw but the lane violation was called on Willie Trimble who was outside the three-point line he broke inside the three-point line into the lane before the ball hit the rim. And you were not allowed to do that, so that was the violation. And it wiped out the free throw by Tillman that would have given the Golden Eagles a two-point lead. Tillman would have had a chance to make it a three-point game with the next free throw, but instead, Triton's got the, excuse me, the Coyotes got the ball down by one point, And they came down and got that tip in at the buzzer by Kwame Alexander. Just a tough loss against a very good San Bernardino team. Cal State LA comes into this game tied with Chico State at 7-6 and six in conference, tied for fourth place. They're one game behind San Francisco State now, at eight, who's 8-5, eight and five. so the Golden Eagles fell from third place to fourth place with that loss. UC San Diego has improved so much. They're 6-7 and seven in conference play on the year, 7-9 and nine overall. If the Tritons win tonight's game, they will be tied with the Golden Eagles in the conference standings. So that's why this is a very big game for Cal State LA. If they lose this game, they will be stuck in a a glut of, glut of teams that are right in the middle of the conference. They have to win this game to stay in the upper half of the standings before they go out on that road trip. They don't come back to the Eagles' nest until February 15th against San Francisco State. That'll be the last two games here at the Eagles' nest. It'll be February 15th and February 16th against Sonoma State and San Francisco State. So we're about ready to get this one underway. Tritons in their blue uniforms with gold trim. Golden Eagles in their white uniforms with black trim. And we are underway. Hope you enjoy this one wherever you're listening to it. On the Cal State LA Athletics Network, Munson in the front court. And I believe the shot clock did not start. That's why the whistle, seven seconds into this one. So the game clock ran off seven seconds, so the shot clock will probably have to be reset to about 28. And it's reset to 29. So the Golden Eagles will get another crack at this first possession here. As Munson has it in the front court. Dumps it into Camper. And the shot clock is not running, so there's a problem with the shot clock right now. Officials are going to have to look at that. We'll see if they can get that straightened out. As there's 1949, 11 seconds have gone off the game clock. But the officials are going to have to hold up play to see if the shot clock will run. As they're testing it out. So UC San Diego, as I said, comes into this game off a win over Cal State Dominguez Hills. What makes their run so impressive is that their four wins in five games have all been on the road. So they've played very well on the road. These two teams matched up earlier this year. You, you, Cal State with a big victory, 61-54 to over UC San Diego on November 30th. That's a place the Golden Eagles have not been able to win the last couple of years. So that was an impressive early season victory for Cal State LA. 
Of course, that's when UC San Diego started out the year one and seven. As Tillman gets underneath the Singer. Singer lays it up, misses the layup. Richard with the rebound. Singer gets the loose ball. Now Richard gets it. He's double teamed. Now gets off to Singer. Singer wide open, but he's not going to shoot that three. Now over to Munson. The shot clock at three. Munson doesn't know it. Pulls up for a 25 footer. No good. Boy, they had no idea the shot clock there. I think the mix up in the shot clock kind of threw off the Golden Eagles on their possession. And the Tritons will bring it up for their first trip. Now the front court straight away, three pointer. No good. And now in the front court quickly is Munson. That was by Dyer. Now Munson looking to run the offense, looking for someone to come out and get the ball, and Tillman gets it. Off the singer. Richard setting the screen, and Tillman cuts back door. Now Richard above the three-point line. Gets off to Tillman. Golden Eagles, not much movement here in the early going. Now Tillman looking for someone to give it to. Gives it out to Richard. Richard with seven seconds. Boy, Richard pulls up for a fall away, 18 footers and air ball. Julian Camper has the ball go off his hands out of bounds and will go to UC San Diego. So this is kind of what I was afraid of here to start the game. The UC San Diego plays at such a slow pace that it kind of lulls the Golden Eagles to sleep where when they run their half court offense, they're just kind of standing around and there's not much movement. If you may remember the game several weeks back against Cal State East Bay, most of the game was like that where the Golden Eagles just could not get into a tempo at all. It's about thrown away. Munson coming the other way to Tillman, two on one. Gets off, nice pass to Tillman who throws it up. The ball goes out of bounds and will go to go the Golden Eagles. It might have gone off Tillman's leg, but the official said it goes to the Golden Eagles, so a bit of a break there as Munson will inbound it. Still no score in this one. Now Singer. Richard posted up, they get it to Munson instead, swing it around to Tillman. They load a camper. That's a mismatch with Dyer on him. Camper backs it in, all the way underneath, puts up a little three-footer and puts it in. So boy, that's really a matchup the Golden Eagles can exploit. Dyer is only 6'6", six, six, but he's only 210 pounds. Camper has a lot more bulk on him. He's really got him outsized, so we'll see if the Golden Eagles exploit that matchup. As the ball out to McGrath, way above the three-point line, gets over to Dyer, swung around to McCann. McCann double-teamed out to Dyer. Dyer fakes the three, in low to Peters, all by himself, shot rejected by Jordan Richard! He sends it out of bounds, so he got there late, but he was just in time to send that one out of bounds. So Richard adding to that block shot record, and there's 11 seconds on the shot clock for the Tritons. Peters will inbound the ball, gets off to McCann. Richard coming way out, and oh, a cheap foul there. Boy, no advised foul by Richard. He, he had no business being out there where the point guard was. So Richard, who got two quick fouls, in the first half in yesterday's game, he had to sit out for the last 15 minutes of the first half. Picks up an ill-advised foul there. And now the ball inbounded to McCann. In low to Peters. Shot no good. Richard challenged it. Underneath, Porter gets the rebound. Off to Peters, and the Tritons will reset. So 2 nothing. Slow start in this one. 17-18 remaining in the first half. Now McCann goes around a Porter screen. In the lane, kicks it out, throws it behind Peters. Chases it down. Peters goes around Tillman. Underneath shot rejected by Richard. So Richard with two quick block shots. He's making his presence felt. And now Munson the other way. Munson all the way underneath has the ball stripped. Off his leg out of bounds. So they caught it that time. They didn't catch it when it went off Tillman's leg. But that one they do catch. Willie Trimble will come in and Richard will sit down. Stephen Thompson was very unhappy with that foul by Richard a minute ago. And that's why he's taking an early seat as McCann will bring the ball in the front court. McCann is a ball handler extraordinaire for the Tritons. He's second in the conference in assists, averaging about four a game. Of course, Willie Trimble, who's out there, is also one of the conference leaders in assists. Underneath, dumped under to Dyer, knocked away by Tillman, nice play. It'll stay with the Tritons. It's the Golden Eagles with really active hands here on defense in the early going. And the Tritons will get the ball out of bounds with 18 seconds on the shot clock. Now McCann dumps it underneath the Peters all alone. He lays it up and in. Boy, a breakdown on defense there. I think Peters was surprised. He was that wide open under the basket. And he lays it in to tie this game at two. Coach Thompson calling a play as Trimble looks at him. Now Munson. Boy, very slow movement right now. Trimble gets over inside, tried to get it to Camper. The ball was kicked by McGrath. And the shot clock will stay at 17 seconds. 
So it seems like the game's being played in slow motion right now in the early going. Let's see if either team can pick up and get into any kind of rhythm at all. As Trimble gets over to Munzen. Munzen drives inside, thinks better of it, gets out to Trimble, straight away for three. Almost banks it in. Camper gets the rebound, puts it up and puts it in. So Julian Camper once again finding his offense inside for Cal State LA. He has all four of their points. It's 4-2. Now it's off to Peters. Dyer guarded by Singer. Ooh, Trimble almost had the steal on McCann. Now Singer comes up to Hedge. Trimble right on McCann. Gets off to McGrath. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Now Porter guarded by Camper. Gets off to McCann. McCann fakes the shot, drives inside. Gets off to Peters with five on the clock, with four on the clock, with three. Gets off to Peters, long fall away three-pointer with one on the clock, no good. So that's what I talked about with the Tritons. They run the clock way down. And then Tillman kicks it off, runs over a man, and a charge is called. McGrath takes the charge. Tillman was out of control there. He waited too long before he made the pass to Singer. So an early foul on Tillman, two team fouls on the Golden Eagles. And a quick turnover. The Tritons will bring the ball back up, trying to tie this one up. So McCann gets around Trimble in the front court. Goes all the way underneath. Kicks out. The ball dipped. Almost stolen. Dyer gets it over to Porter. Now Peters. Oh, almost thrown away. McGrath gets it over to McCann. So the Golden Eagles very active trying to knock the ball away. Now Dyer whips it cross court to McGrath. McGrath fakes the three. Goes inside. Underneath. Up and under. Lays it up. Rolls off the rim. Camper gets the rebound. Tips it to himself. Ahead to Trimble. Three Tritons are back. Now Munson gets it cross court. Munson has Porter on him. That's a mismatch, but he doesn't want to take advantage of it. Gets off to Tillman. Now Tillman gets over to Singer. Trimble will reset. Now Tillman gets over to Munson. Let's see if he takes advantage now of Porter. Pulls up for a 19-footer. Bounces off the rim. No good. Camper high for the rebound. He had it and loses it. Tough break there. Goes off to McCann. Now McGrath. Tillman's there to guard him. Now over to McCann. Tritons will slow it up once again. Now Porter, guarded by Camper. Looking to drive, gets it underneath. Nice pass to Dyer. Singer is there, puts up the shot. No good, good defense by Singer. He didn't foul him. Munson looking to push it the other way. And the Tritons get back on defense. Golden Eagles will have to reset. We're under 14 minutes to go in the first half. There have only been six points scored in this game so far. As Munson gets the high pass from Trimble. Back door is Camper, puts it up and fouled. We'll see if they give him free throws or not. I believe the foul was on Porter. And actually it was on Dyer. So that'll take us to our first media timeout. 13.44 to go in the first half. Boy, there hasn't been much to report so far. Cal State LA is leading 4-2 over UC San Diego on the Cal State LA Athletics Network. Girls with curls, I don't know about you, but my hair is crazy. Finally, it's time to stop hating your curls. I have to tell you about my new best friend, Mixed Chicks. Since I could hold a brush, I have been trying to tame my tresses. I never wore my hair curly. I had to use so many different products or I'd get frizz. Mixed Chicks has revolutionized curly hair. They are truly the only product designed for us. Whether you're black, white, Asian, Latin, Mediterranean, or any glorious combination of them all, Mixed Chicks is for you. Now all I need is Mixed Chicks and I have soft, sexy, defined curls that aren't heavy or sticky. Mixed Chicks is 100% vegan, completely affordable, and on Halle Berry's top must-have list. And the best news is now Mixed Chicks is available at Target. Soft, sassy, touchable curls are no longer out of reach. Pick up Mixed Chicks today at your neighborhood Target store or go to www.mixedchicks.net. 13.44 remaining in this first half. The Tritons average about 65.5 points a game. The Golden Eagles average 67.5, but you wouldn't know it by the way this one has started. Both teams having all kinds of trouble getting points. And they do say that last foul was in the active shooting, so Julian Camper will go to the line. He has all four of the Golden Eagles points in this game. Boy, where would they be without Julian Camper right now? He played 36 big minutes in yesterday's game and had 14 points to go along with 12 rebounds. So he had a very good game in his first start in a long time. As a free throw, line drive is no good. That was an area of concern for the Golden Eagles yesterday. In a very close game, that's certainly something you can look at. Cal State LA 
was only 8 of 15 from the free throw line, just over 50% as the second free throw bounces around and out. And the loose ball goes off to the Tritons. Quentin Watkins makes his first appearance for the Golden Eagles in the game, number 15. He only played three minutes in yesterday's game, so a very brief appearance. Stephen Thompson, though, certainly looking for offense in this one as Justin Brew puts up the shot no good. Brew wearing a face mask, so he's easy to spot. Number 20 out there for the Tritons. Trimble all the way underneath, lays it up and lays it in. Nice play by Trimble. Finally gets some early offense for the Golden Eagles. That makes it 6-2. to two. As McCann brings it to the front court, kicks out to Peters. Now Porter over to McGrath. So Brew, the only new Triton in there. He has the ball now. Turns on Singer. Off the glass, five-footer no good. Watkins gets the rebound. Watkins with three Tritons back. Dribbles around his back. Ooh, almost a hesitation, almost a carry there. Gets off to Camper. And the Golden Eagles will reset. So Richard getting ready to check back in at the scorer's table on the next dead ball. Trimble gets it into Tillman. Tillman backs in on McGrath. Size advantage there, and a traveling violation is called. So Tillman was double teamed, and he just couldn't break free. Number 23, Hunter Walker comes in for the Tritons, a 6'4 freshman from Santa Maria. Richard comes back in for Cal State LA, and Camper will get an early rest as McCann will bring the ball in the front court. Triton's only basket of the game came at the 16-37 mark, so they've gone four minutes without a basket. Of course, they played almost eight minutes and only have two points, so not much to look at for them. As McCann, guarded by Trimble, cut off. Gets it out to Walker. Now back to McCann. Bruce sets the screen. Nine seconds on the clock. Now, underneath the porter, they leave him alone. Richard is there and blocks the shot. So Richard recovered in time to defend the basket. He gets another block. Now Tillman gets over to Trimble. Watkins looking inside to Richard. They get it to him. Richard on Porter. Mismatch there. Now whips out to Tillman who will pull up for three on the wing. No good. Ball goes out to Trimble. Long rebound. Luckily for the Golden Eagles, they'll get another possession. So shots are few and far between in this game. Golden Eagles only three and nine so far. Trimble goes around a singer screen. Off to Watkins. Watkins over to Tillman. Tillman looking to drive. Can't find a lane. Now Tillman kicks off to Trimble. Trimble pull up 15 footer. No good. And the ball goes off to Porter on the rebound. Now McCann quickly coming the other way. Now the Tritons looking to push. McCann pull up 8 footer. No good. Brew gets the rebound but loses it to Singer. Nice play by Watkins to knock it away. Singer coming the other way. Kicks off to Tillman. Now Trimble over to Watkins. Watkins pulls up for three on the wing. No good off the front rim. McCann with the rebound. So the pace finally starting to pick up here a little bit. Now Trimble, as McCann goes all the way, puts it up and rolls it in. So the first basket for the Tritons in about six minutes. So McCann's first bucket of the game makes it a 6-4 to four game. Now Trimble... Slowing it down once again over to Tillman. Watkins cuts back door. They find him. Now into Richard at the free throw line. Richard has the ball knocked away, gets it back. Kicks it out to Tillman. Tillman off to Trimble. Over to Singer. Triton's really packing it in in the, in the post. Singer pulls up for a standout three-pointer. Doesn't hit anything. And McCann quickly the other way. Ball thrown over the head and out of bounds of Walker. Boy, couldn't get it. Dyer comes back in for the Tritons along with number 13, Matt Bailey, 5'11 junior from Mission Viejo. So for the Golden Eagles, Mark Wilson comes in. Watkins will sit down. Munzen also comes back in. So Stephen Thompson looking for some kind of offense. Wilson provided a nice spark of offense in yesterday's game. He had eight points off the bench in only seven minutes of play. So we'll see if he can do that again. As we have 10 minutes to go in the first half, Tillman, spin move up and under, shot rejected. Munson gets the loose ball. Nice defense there. And there was a reset on the shot clock, which is not correct. So the officials are going to have to discuss what was left on the shot clock. So they're going to put 17 seconds on the shot clock. As the Golden Eagles will have it out of bounds. 9.55 remaining. Munson will get it on the baseline. And they will take, decide to take immediate timeout here. 9.55 to go in the first half. 
It is six to four, Cal State LA. You heard me correctly, six to four on the Cal State LA Athletics Network. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yo -ha. No. -uh. Yo -ha. Okay, what are you guys doing? We're trying to decide if Dibs doesn't. beats I saw it first does. Wait, what? Well, there's only one double double left for our lunch meeting, and I saw it first. Uh -huh. No, Therefore, it's mine. No, I called Dibs, yes, which means the dibs. double double no. should go to me. It's in the rule book. Nuh uh. Yo -ha. Nuh uh. Yo -ha. Yeah, well, you dress funny. I oh. I'm telling you. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Children, listen, there's only one way to handle this staring contest. No, no, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Um, no, boys. The only grown-up way to handle this is for... Whoa! Hang on, you guys! What, what? is that over there? What? Where? Where? Hey, where's she going? Dude, I think she just took the last double-double. That's so hot. Yeah, huh? There's a fight. I get it. I, no, no. Get, 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 I, get, get, get. For the in-and-out nearest you, call toll-free 1-800-786-1000. 9.55 remaining in the first half. I was looking in the media guide to see if they showed what the fewest points in a, in a half for Cal State LA in their history was. They don't show that. They show the most points in a half. I remember earlier this year, the Golden Eagles only scored 16 points in a first half. I believe that was against Chico State. And they have to go a ways to get to 16 points right now. It's only 6-4. to four. As Munzen will inbound the ball on the baseline. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Out there with Mark Wilson, Jordan Richard, Willie Trimble, and James Tillman for Cal State LA. As Wilson gets over to Munzen. Richard post up inside. They don't get it to him. Tr Tillman, eight seconds on the clock. Over to Trimble. Now Munzen with six. Has to do something. In low to Richard with four. Richard turn around. Hook shot from eight. No good. Munzen tries to tip the ball. Goes out to Mark Wilson. Oh, Richard was all by himself. If Wilson would have saw it. Richard would have had an easy dunker layup. Now Wilson and a carryover is called. He hesitated on the dribble. Julian Camper comes back in for Cal State LA. Tillman's going to get a rest. So the Golden Eagles with a decided size advantage now with both Camper and Richard inside. Tritons do not have anyone, I believe, taller out there than Brew at 6'5". So the Golden Eagles really have to get the ball inside. We'll see if they can do it as Brew has it in the front court. Off to McGrath. And it's swung around to Matt Bailey. Bailey goes inside off to Brew. Goes over Richard quickly and scores. Nice shot by Justin Brew for his first basket. He's the Triton senior leader. He comes off the bench now. But he's the team's leading rebounder at about seven a game. He's a valuable player on their team. Now Trimble has the ball. See if they can get the ball inside. The Tritons, I'm sure, really packing it in on that zone defense. And a three-second violation is called, probably on Camper. So nothing happening there. Stephen Thompson very unhappy with his team. As the Tritons bringing it up, looking for their first lead, a 6-6 six to six game. 8.40 remaining in the first half. Now Walker has the ball guarded by Wilson. Gets it over to McGrath. McGrath has been quiet so far. Has, has pretty much everyone else on offense. McGrath guarded by, by Munzen. Gets off the brew. Back to McGrath. Bumped by Munzen. McGrath in the lane. All the way. Lays it up. Blows the layup. Boy, he was all the way in by himself. Now Munzen gets the outlet pass. One on three. Gets over Trimble. The Tritons are back. They do a good job of getting back in transition defense, and the Golden Eagles will have to reset. Now Munzen looking to run something as Wilson comes out to set a screen. Now Richard also come out to set a screen. Camper is post up inside to get it to Richard. Get it in low to Camper. Guarded by Dyer. Camper should go to work. Four seconds on the shot clock. Kicks out to Trimble with two. Trimble with one has to shoot. Gets the shot, boy, didn't look like he got it off. They say he did. Shot was no good, tip by Richard was no good. And the Tritons will bring it the other way. Now three-pointer by Walker is good. So a three-pointer finally goes down. Tritons are also a pretty good three-point shooting team and they show it right there. That's their first three of the game. And it gives them their first lead of the game, nine to six. Now Trimble over to Munzen. Back to Trimble. Over to Mark Wilson. Wilson looking to drive around the back. 
double team go off balance. He th shoves down a man and gets called for an offensive foul. That was McGrath. He just threw down. So Wilson thoroughly frustrated. Tillman comes back in for the Golden Eagles. Number 21, Shinal Kala makes his first appearance for Cal State LA. 6'2", senior from Lamore. Alcala only played four minutes in yesterday's game. He didn't score. So Bailey will slowly bring it into the front court. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Triton's now with the lead. Dyer gets it over to McGrath. Over to Porter. Back to Dyer. Off to McGrath. Pulls up for three with Munson challenging. No good. Tillman gets the rebound. Golden Eagles trying to run. Tillman has to slow it up and give it to Munson. So the Tritons are back once again. Golden Eagles in a long field goal drought. They have not scored a point in over seven minutes. Now Munson looking inside. Can't find anyone. Gives it to Alcala. See if the Golden Eagles underneath Camper almost got the ball. It's knocked away, but Munson gets it. Lays it up and in. So first basket for the Golden Eagles in a long, long time. Makes it a 9-8 game. First basket for Munson. Munson was pretty quiet in yesterday's game against Cal State San Bernardino. Now McGrath. And inside, they're going to call a foul on Camper, I believe, impeding the progress of Dyer. So that's the fourth team foul on the Golden Eagles. First foul on Camper. Oh, they called on Alcala, excuse me. So first foul on Alcala. As McCann comes back in for the Tritons, Bailey will sit down. Ball inbounded to Dyer. Gets it around, now Peters has it. Now he dumps it in low. And Porter sets the screen. Peters gets it out, three-pointer by Walker. High Archer is good. So two three-pointers by Walker. Walker only a 21% three-point shooter on the year, but you wouldn't know it by those two threes. Makes it 12 to eight. Now Munson gets over to Alcala, back to Munson. Three players going inside. They can't get it to any of them. Now swung around. Alcala looking at Probe. Gets it off to Munson. Over to Tillman. Tillman had a three for a second, but then he was covered. In low to Richard. Richard puts it off the backboard. What was that? Boy, I, I didn't know if that was a shot or a pass. Three-pointer by Walker. Off the front rim. No good. Munson gets the rebound. Looking to push it up court quickly. Now he goes around a double screen. Has the ball knocked away and stolen by McCann. McCann loses it and gets it back. So now McCann will bring it up as we have five minutes to go in the first half. 12 to eight is our score, believe it or not. It's not a baseball score, it's a basketball game. As in the lane underneath the Porter. Porter over Richard, puts it up and in. So Porter with his first basket. Stephen Thompson wants a timeout. 4.44 remaining in the first half. UC San Diego is leading Cal State LA 14 to eight on the Cal State LA Athletics Network. Sierra Actor of Alhambra has the benefit of my family's over 80 years experience in the automotive industry. We can honestly say that there's no better time than now to purchase or lease a new or pre-owned vehicle at Sierra Acura of Alhambra. We have a terrific inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles, but more importantly, we have an experienced and knowledgeable staff to guide you with the luxury treatment you should expect as an Acura customer. Get the value you deserve at Sierra Acura of Alhambra. With 80 plus years of experience behind us, we know how. 4.44 remaining in this first half. UC San Diego has opened up their biggest lead of the game, 14 to eight. Golden Eagles just not able to get the ball inside where they have a decided advantage. Tritons know that, so they have packed in a zone the whole game, packing the paint, trying to prevent the Golden Eagles from getting inside. Now Tillman, so Tritons show some full court pressure. Munson, Alcala, Richard, and Camper also out there. Now Alcala gets it off to Munson over to Tillman. Camper calling for the ball. In low to Richard. Creative pass underneath. Ball knocked away and out of bounds and will stay with the Golden Eagles. That will quickly take us to the media timeout now, though. So we'll take another break. 4.23 remaining in the first half. Cal State LA trying to score points desperately down 14-8 on the Cal State LA Athletics Network. Welcome to the Pepsi Refresh Project. This year we're giving millions to fund ideas that will refresh the world. Your ideas, voted on by the public. 
Here's how it works. Submit your ideas at RefreshEverything.com for a chance to win a Pepsi Refresh Grant. Ideas can be submitted in six categories. Health and fitness, arts and culture, neighborhoods, the planet, education, food and shelter. Vote for ideas you care about at RefreshEverything.com and help them become a reality. Everyone can vote for up to 10 ideas each day. Help promote good ideas using our Facebook and Twitter tools. The ideas with the most votes will receive a Pepsi Refresh Grant to make them happen. So could a soda really make the world a better place? With your help, it will. What do you care about? Join the Pepsi Refresh Project. Thousands of ideas, millions in grants. Every Pepsi refreshes the world. One love, one blood, one people. 423 remaining in this first half. The stats so far are not pretty, and you would expect that. Golden Eagles only shooting 4 of 17 so far. Tritons aren't much better. They're only 6 of 20. Golden Eagles have missed all five of their three-point attempts, and they've missed their only two free throws. They are out rebounding. You see San Diego 17 to 11 if you want to look for some kind of bright spot. As Tillman, with 10 seconds on the shot clock, swung around to Munson. Singer back in the game. Hit low to Richard. Richard backs in on Porter, and a traveling violation is called. They say he shuffled the feet before he put the ball down. So another turnover for Cal State LA. That's eight in the first half. Tritons only have two. Still a 14 to eight game. Now some full court pressure being shown by the Golden Eagles. Something to try to pick up their intensity. McCann gets it over to wide open Peters in the corner for three, not close. Ball goes over the head of Richard. It's saved by Peters to Munson. Boy, he could have let that go. Porter actually, it would have been Tritons ball but he tried to save it and the Golden Eagles will take the break. Now Munson once again slowing it down. Goes around a double screen. Gets off to Richard. Richard looking to get to Camper and low he can't. Now Camper calling for the ball, they're fronting him. Now Richard comes out to set the screen. 10 seconds on the shot clock, it's run down once again. Over to Munson with eight. Now with seven, Munson looks to drive. Up and under, 15 foot floater is no good. And Brew with the rebound. Stop a chapter there. Ahead of the pack is Porter. Goes under shot is blocked, but that's goaltending. Richard didn't get there in time. Ball hit the backboard, so that's a basket for Porter. So Willie Trimble comes back in for Cal State LA. Dyer back in for the Tritons as Munson brings it to the front court. We approach three minutes to go in the first half. Cal State LA down by eight. Looking somehow to get a basket. Now Munson over to Tillman. Back to Munson. Tillman pulls up for a long two-pointer. No good. McCann gets the rebound. Boy, if the Golden Eagles could knock down an outside shot or two, maybe that would open up the inside a little bit, but they have not been able to knock down anything from the outside. As Peters goes around the screen. He's left alone. Kicks out to McCann. McCann drives the lane on Trimble. Turn around, tough 13-footer. Bounces twice, no good. High for the rebound is Munson. Nice job there. Quickly brings it up. And Munson will slowly get into the offense. 2.30 to go in the first half. Off to Solomon Singer. Now Munson gets it over to Tillman. Tillman drives the baseline underneath this. Hammered by Dyer and fouled. Boy, it is truly hard to believe that the Golden Eagles have only scored two points in the last 11 minutes of this first half. They had six points with 13 minutes left in the half and they only have eight right now. So it has been a titanic struggle offensively as Tillman going to the line to try and get some freebies and he makes that one. Richard comes back in. So that's the first point of the game for James Tillman, believe it or not. Third lean score in the conference. And that's his first point. He had 20 points to lead the way in yesterday's game against Cal State San Bernardino. Go along with 11 rebounds. And he makes that one. So that makes it 16 to 10. The Golden Eagles finally get into double figures scoring. It only took 18 minutes to do it. Now McCann gets in the front court to Peter. Oh, to Porter. Trimble slid on the floor and kind of undercut him. Takes him out. So that'll be a foul on Trimble. But that's only a fifth team foul on the Golden Eagles. Tritons only have two team fouls. So... Not many fouls in this first half. As McCann will inbound the ball. Gets it into Porter, back to McCann. 
Pulls up for a quick three. That's not close. Munzo with the rebound. Tillman ahead of him, but four Tritons come back. So Munzo will have to regroup. Now it goes around a Singer screen and a Richard screen. Pulls up for a three-pointer. Kind of off balance. Oh, but Singer gets the rebound. Nice effort. Puts it up and blows the shot. It gets tipped out of bounds and will stay with Cal State LA. So good effort there by Richard and by Trimble to force the extra possession. Boy, Singer looked like he had an uncontested putback and just didn't come close to putting it in. Now Singer gets the inbounds pass. Of course, he struggled offensively last week, but he up and under, he misses the layup right there. So another close-in shot missed by Singer. And the Tritons will bring it up. 135 remaining in the half. Boy, McGrath has been quiet for the Tritons in the first half. They're leading score, but it has not mattered as Peters has the ball in the front court over to McCann. Now McGrath has it. McGrath is hounded by Trimble. Now Brew, guarded by Tillman, looks to drive inside. Tillman is all over him. Brew has nowhere to go. Gets off to Peters, wide open for three. No good. Boy, Porter and Singer went down underneath the basket. See who they get the foul on. They get it on Singer, I believe. So there was a real wrestling match inside. So that's the first foul on Singer. That's the sixth team foul. So it'll be ball out of bounds, but it'll be free throws. Every foul on the Golden Eagles from here out as the Tritons called timeout with 1-10 remaining in the first half. UC San Diego leading Cal State LA 16-10 on the Cal State LA Athletics Network. The California Collegiate Athletic Association. 12 public institutions, 12 sports venues, 11 championships each year. A Division II conference born in 1939, the CCAA is holder of an unprecedented 149 national championships. From the redwoods of Northern California to the sunny beaches in the South, student athletes who compete at the CCAA also contribute to the community to programs such as the Student Athlete Advisory Committee and excel in the classroom, where 453 earning CCAA all academic honors in 2010. The CCAA, a proud member of NCAA Division II. 1-10 remaining in the first half. Tritons will inbound the ball, looking to extend their lead. Now Porter gets it over to Peters. And McCann, who usually has the ball in his hands, as it's over to McGrath. Richard comes out to hedge on the double team, now it's swung around. Now Porter gets it over to Peters. Peters, who just missed a three, underneath the brew. Richard challenges the shot, shot is, re is missed. Excuse me, Singer, the loose ball off to Tillman. Tillman trying to get some early offense underneath. Rising shot up and a no. Hits the rim twice and comes off. So that's the kind of luck it's been in the first half of the Golden Eagles. They just can't get anything to go in the basket. Now the Tritons will hold the ball. Ball's knocked away by Trimble and will stay with UC San Diego. The shot clock is exactly eight seconds ahead of the game clock. It's at 27 right now. The game clock's at 35. So I'm sure the Tritons will run most, if not all, of that clock down before they take a shot. As they usually do as Porter has the ball. Gets it off to McCann. McCann fakes the pass, goes underneath the round Trimble, lays it up and blows the layup. And now Munson, boy, Singer went down hard. Munson will bring it into the front court. The shot clock is off. And 19 seconds left in the half. See if the Golden Eagles hold for the last shot. That's what Coach Thompson's telling them to do. So Munson will hold it out as we're down to 11 seconds. Now with 10, Munson goes around a Singer screen with seven, with six, with five, out to Trimble with four. Not much happening with three. Munson with two. Pulls up for a three-pointer at the buzzer, no good. He tried to create contact, he couldn't get it. So that pretty much typifies this first half. Boy, what a first half. Golden Eagles with a season low 10 points in the first half. We may have to look in the record books and see what the all-time franchise low is for a half. But just no offense by either team. No flow to this game whatsoever. Golden Eagles got out to a 6-2 lead. Since then, though, it's been the Tritons who scored when there has been scoring. There hasn't been much of it. They led by as many as eight. It's down to six now, but it's anybody's game with this few points scored. But it is halftime here at the Eagles Nest. Michael Nemitz saying, I'll be back in a few minutes with scores of other games, first half stats, and the beginning of a hopefully higher scoring second half here on the Cal State LA Athletics Network.
Life of the balance is how we distinguish ourselves from the other two uh, divisions. Presidents and chancellors from Division II institutions were talking about what was happening with Division II. Out of that uh, initial summit emerged a consensus. Our basic goals of how we want our students to develop and mature and the kinds of experiences we think that are valuable for them were really reflected in what the strategic positioning platform of Division II encourages. It's united our membership. This is my 14th year in Division II, and our platform has been one of the best things that have ever happened to Division II. We've defined who we are. I see it in our student athletes who really sort of swell their chests up and, and are really proud of, of who they are and what they do. I talk about our student athlete experience at Division II, about being really, truly life in the balance. The administration and the presidents have done a good job saying there will be balance. You can have your three hours a day, but after that, they're mine or they're the faculty members. We have to make sure that every student athlete has a broad experience in terms of academic opportunity, career opportunity, commitment to the community, understanding who they are, growing up, and being good competitors athletics. I want our student athletes to be involved in student government. I want our student athletes to participate in the music programs that we have on campus, in the theater programs, in the student organizations such as Students in Free Enterprise. That to me is life in the balance. It's not just academics and athletics. Many of our student athletes are leaders on campus. Uh, they take the initiative for community engagement projects. We've all heard the cliche that most of the learning, uh, you know, occurs outside of the classroom. Well, that's the social aspect. That's the social responsibility aspect. One of the great things about Division II is your proximity to the action. You're right there. You're not going to be in nosebleed seats. Uh, conversely, you hear a lot more and you see a lot more. And so we have a responsibility to our fans, uh, not only to put on a, a good product on the floor, but, but one that uh, a mom and dad feel good about with their son or daughter with them. It is a balanced program of academics, athletics, and community outreach. 25% of our student athletes receive no athletics aid at all. The partial scholarship model actually allows a lot more students to participate in athletics as scholarship athletes. But it says to the students, you're partially an athlete, you're partially a scholar. It allows students who would not otherwise have an opportunity to go to college to do so. Uh, Spirit of Division II, it's students first and student success first. I'm always reminded that Miles Brand used to say that we're an educational association, not a sports association. And I think we really took that to heart at Division II. I believe that we have an opportunity to create in Division II a vision that the Knight Commission has been talking about for a long time, about the appropriate role of intercollegiate athletics. Life in the balance gives students the flexibility to make choices was a spark and then a slow fire and now it's igniting and I really think it is across a lot of our campuses. The idea is that every student athlete should have as full a possible life experience while an undergraduate as we can afford. I'm the president of the University of Indianapolis. President, West Texas A&M University. And I chose Division II. And I chose I chose Division II.
Hey, the back to half time with the Eagles now scored. UC San Diego's leading class to the 16 to 10. In the unbelievably low scoring first half, I'm not going to see the quarter for the Eagles. On every first half, there was just was no flow at all on offense for either side, and a lot of uh, mid-table balls and everything else. So, so anyway, we'll hope the second half will bring more offense. I want to quickly get to the fours. Tostin to me to say he's leading Tostin San Bernardino at the 43 to 41. Remember, that's the Tostin San Bernardino game that broke the Golden Eagle Bulls' heart last night. And also, Cap Valley Command is leading Chico State 30 to 22 with about three minutes left in the first half of that game. That game, I believe, got started late. Of course, that's important for the Gold Eagles. Chico State is tied with Cal State LA for fourth place in the conference. And also, the Cal State Dominion Sales game is important because Cal State Dominion Sales is a game behind Cal State LA along with this UC San Diego team. Let's quickly get the first half stats. Not much to get to. Ben Titans are led by Henry Walker at six points. Colin Porter at four points. Larry Peters, James McClellan, and Jeff Debrew have three, and that's it. The cast of the line, they led by Julian Kelper at two points, excuse me, four points, two baskets in the early going. And that's it, they're along with four rebounds. Larry Trevor, James Quinn, and Josh Munson all had two points. And those are the only players to score for the Gold Eagles. They were four of 24 in the first half, 16%. Starting seven of 26. That was two of eight for long range, but that's better than the Gold Eagles have missed all seven of their long range attempts. Gold Eagles had all four of the free throws in the first half, only made two of them. They did all rebound the Titans 24 to 16. But the Gold Eagles had eight big turnovers for two for UC San Diego. So Coach Thompson has his team in the locker room a long time. I think he really led them the right act. Let's see if it doesn't look good. Quickly, I want to get on record my Super Bowl prediction. I know the big game in the Super Bowl is tomorrow. Believe it or not, in September, at the beginning of the season, I picked the two teams to be in the Super Bowl. I know a lot of people did. But I picked Baltimore and San Francisco, and that's exactly what happened. So you get lucky every once in a while. But anyway, I thought long and hard about it, and I could go either way. This is the toughest Super Bowl game I've had to pick probably ever. I finally decided to go with the team I thought would win it at the start of the year, which is San Francisco. I'm picking them to beat Baltimore 31 to 24, so keep that in mind for tomorrow. When I come back in a couple of weeks, I probably won't even remember what I said. But <laughs> if I get it right, you know, at least I will kind of smart. Anyway, the Golden Eagles in this one, after this game, they go on the road for six of the final eight games. They play Castle Monterey Bay and Castle East Bay next week. And the next game the Eagles next, I'm going to expect to be February 15th against San Francisco State. That will be at 730, followed by Sonoma State the next night. I was going to the second half. Same starters from UC San Diego and McCall with the ball. Gold Eagles with their same five to start the game. Matt Porter. Kept back three. Nice play to McCall and raise it up and in. Boy, nice play to McCall and kept back three and Porter five him. First basket in the second half. A lot quicker than it happened in the first half. It's 18 to 10. Kelly was showing up two threes down. Let's see if the Gold Eagles can move the back quicker. And center. Gets it over to Tillman. Tillman dribbling and gets over to Munson. Munson gets out to Richard. Head out to Munson. In the middle of Camper. Camper double team. Has it all knocked away and goes out of bounds. Coach Tops is ready for second on defense. He wants football pressure. So he wants something to get the Gold Eagles going. Remember, they did this against Top Hall of Pomona and they got it back in the game last week. Now over to the back, pulls up the three on the way and knocks it down. From the back, that's his first basket of the game on his fifth shot. So he had been quiet in the first half, but that makes it 21 to 10. Not the way Pasco really wanted to start the second half at all. Of course, this whole game has been a nightmare offensively for the Gold Eagles. The three throws, good ball runs in. So finally, the fifth outside side of the game goes in for Josh Benzin at a critical time. It's a 21 to 13. Now, well, losing the ball is better. James got to go into the fifth part. They only have two seconds and they call timeout. So that will give them the first 10 seconds to go to pass. With 18 29 left in the second half, you see some of with a 21 to 13 lead on the Casco Valley Fifth Network. Thank you. 
I chose Division 2 because I can just graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer at home and be in every part of the community. I chose Division 2 because I can go home and I think Paul chose that too. I chose Division 2 because I chose this one. Students have more time over in front of us. I can be a big fan of the community. I chose Division 2 for all these reasons and more. I chose Division 2 for all these reasons and more. So the Titans didn't mind the ball here. They have another 10 seconds to go to the pass, and they go to the pass easily. When they call that timeout, they had one second to get it over, so they had the ball as McGrath gets it to the game. Back to McGrath, wide open for three, late challenge. Ball goes in and out and back in again. So the shots are not going in at all in the first half of the Titans, and they're starting to go in, especially from long range. It's a 24 to 13. As Tillman has the ball, gets out to Benson over the center. Tillman pulls up for a pitch three point, and then Camper gets the loose ball, picks it up, and he is fouled. So Camper making things happen once again. They get the foul on McGrath. So McGrath with his first foul. Camper will go through the line. Well, he misses only two free throws in the first half. Pepper had been shooting free throws well as of late, and he misses that free throw. So, boy, tough for Pepper. His percentage is down to 61% after he had it up to about 68% the other day as he makes that free throw. Well, now it's 24 to 14. Kimball will make an early appearance for Pasadena in the second half. So another football score. Of course, everybody thinking, I'm sure, about that Super Bowl tomorrow. Now, uh, to Dyer, this last. And now, uh, for the last 32 minutes, they had another timeout. Again, they only had one second to get it over. So, you see San Diego wasting timeouts to spend the ball in the front court. 17.41 remaining. We'll take a quick 30 second break. Pasadena is down by 10. Girls, Miss Girls, I don't know about you, but my hair is crazy. So anyway, it's time to stop hating your curls. I have to tell you about my new best friend, Mix Chicks. Mix Chicks is revolutionized curly hair. They no longer feel fuzz. Clean your curls with Mix Chicks. All I need is Mix Chicks, and I have soft, sexy, defined curls that aren't heavy or sticky. 100% vegan, always affordable, and the secret of the Hollywood elite. Pick up Mix Chicks today at your neighborhood Target store or go to www.mixchicks.me. Titans run down the ball. Now the kid whips in the pass. Oh, he's single almost hit. Who's that? He's the Porter who knows that they're going to sit. Porter was that guy around. So an uncontested basket. So the big old pass backfired for the Gold Eagles there. Titans up by 12. Now Tillman gets over to Trimble. Gibson posts it up. Goes to Munson. Now Tillman. Gets one of the Munson back to Tillman. Trimble. Got better with the shot. Gets over to Munson. Back to Trimble, pull for three on the wing, not close. And Porter gets the rebound. That's not what you want to see. The Golden Eagles didn't even look inside at all. As McCann has it in the front court. So nothing will seem to change for the Golden Eagles offense so far in the second half. Peters thought about the three, gets back to McCann instead. And the Titans will reset. And Brown Bell gets left in the back. Yes, the Ben's line and finally 10 footer is a beauty. He created space to get that shot off. That makes it 28 to 14. Yet another football score. Now Dibble gets one of the ends in. Singer looking inside for Timmons. Timmons there, they won't get it to him. Now Singer tries to get a drive, gets one of the ends in instead. Victor in the lane. Now the now Benson gets it over to Singer. Singer drives the baseball up and over the up. Here he gets his own lead and picks it up again. Nice effort there by Singer. So the Golden Eagles' basket makes it 28 to 16. 
Matt Peters is the kid who's usually both the pressure. Gets over the dial. And the guys will not hesitate to the three. It's not close. Singles out of the pack. Singles did not see it. Titans do an excellent job of getting back on transition defense. Now, Kegel, looking over the center. Kegel looking at the guy, drives inside, picks up, draws the contact, and will go to the line. So, Singles starting to show some aggression here. But they do play his first basket. Foul is on Dyer. So, third foul on him. He's the first player on any, either side in any kind of foul trouble. Foul and Singles going to the line. Free throw rattles in and out. Blue comes back into the Titans, along with Matt Bailey, number 13. So, Singer has struggled offensively last weekend, and he's struggling again this weekend. Of course, he's out there for defense and rebounding normally. Both leaders will need offense from somewhere as he rolls in the second free throw. Single had five points in yesterday's game. He gets past each other leader, and that was his third point. But that's a stand by Richard. That's nice still there. So they crash the turnover, and they were just trying to get it back in the city. Did it single all the way? Where's Nick and Rose now? Where's Nick and Rose single? So I think they're by a single. Right to that one, so the Eagles make it 28 to 19. Now we're back putting the glass. Trying to get in the front foot, finally does to the can. Jordan Richard is on him. Now Kenny picks it up in the turn, loses the ball out of bounds. So the Big Eagles finally have the Titans frazzled here. A couple of these quick point pressures. But it's possible that they do not expend much energy at all in the first half, standing around so much on offense. They certainly can play that full point pressure quite a bit in the second half. That's cool. Look at the turn here if you didn't have the fumble. Once again, they sat down on Tillman. That fumble. Got it off the side, he drives instead among three defenders. Underneath the singer in the ring, picks it up, no good. Looks at the fire, the singer gets it back, picks it up and puts it in. So the great leader's finally starting to exert a huge size of things over East San Diego. It only took 25 minutes. Now he's preparing in the front court. And he said, Look, this is what they did, Mitchell. He got the corner, he picks it up and rolls it off. There's no clear out of bounds by the corner when we go to the great leaders. So the Golden Eagles saying the first signs of life in this game. And that will take us to a media timeout. 14-23 left in this second half. Casper Day is playing 28-21. The UP Field Hero on the Casper Day Athletics Network. Casper Day Athletics Network. Casper Day Athletics Network. Casper Day Athletics Network. Casper Day Athletics and just about all of us who have done play and see the problem in sports. Fourteen twenty three later in the second half, class to the A, down by seven. Well, it makes me think of the Super Bowl tomorrow with all these football scores we've had this game so far. 24 to 14, 28 to 14, and the Golden Eagles have scored the last seven uh, touchdowns, so to speak, to make it 28 to 21. As Mons will bring the front court out there with Singer, Richard, Tillman, and Ray Chamber. Titans out there with Mike Bailey along with Porter, Justin Blue out there. And also Walker, who's got his Singer. Great Singer drills it right into the second defender, and it's not the who gets the ball? Richard says, oh, that's the shot! Oh, Jordan Richard gets the ball, and wow! That was amazing! Jordan Richard seemingly came out of nowhere to break that, look like an uncontested layup. 
and thankfully the Dead Ligas could not get the loose ball. Early got it back, and the uh, two Dead Ligas left the challenge to shot, and Munson fired him. Boy, great hustle by Jordan Richard. He's got four blocks in the game. Boy, he's shooting two. He misses the first free throw. That is the first free throw of the game for UC San Diego. They have not been to the free throw line the entire game. So, Porter has six points. Not going to make it an eight point game. He wears it off the end. So, two big misses there. That keeps the game with his momentum going. So, I said, they're throwing on a 7 0 win, which in this game is huge. Alex Singer, Portman cutting around the screen, gets the ball. And he doesn't want to take the shot from out there. Now, Munson. Looking to go around the center screen, he goes the other way instead. Cooks the underneath the team, and somebody has two feet goes like that. Two more fingers get to the rebound. Shot is ejected. Somebody gets to his ball. He is landed on the rebound. Good call. Boy, the shot was blocked. I thought there was some contact on the line there. Underneath. Put out the rim. Got a walk around the foul. Now on Munson. So Walker gets the basket, a huge basket for the Titans. He establishes their nine point lead. First point for them scored in a while, and they, they needed them badly. Big throw is good. Looks like the Titans are going to show some football pressure of their own. And a 31 21 lead, 13 22 remaining. Now Munson gets it to center. Give it back to Munson. Don't need to get the middle of the front court, Munson. Back to center, Barry gets in the front court and tries to send her. Well, he doesn't release that. Now, standing around once again, not much movement. Now, Benson pulls up for a three, straight away, no good. Well, for these guys, Chairman. The long shot, long rebound, and the Red Eagles will release that. Now, Chairman. Chairman wants the ball. Chairman decides to drive instead. Now, the holding foul is called on Walker. That's the third team foul in this half on the Titans. Gold Eagles are two team fouls. So Munson will end down the guy with 26. Actually, it should be a reset on the shot clock, and it will be. So on the baseline, Munson gets in the center. Now Richard, in the lane, can't that. He wants the ball. They get to Trimble instead. Now Trimble gets in low. Back up the table, inside out, pulls up the three, not close. You can see that side was way off, and there goes out of bounds. So, a nice inside out, inside out play, but Trimble just wasn't close on the shot. Now, Blue gets him the glass in the front court. Now, it's tipped underneath. It's silly, it goes to center. Benson, ahead of the path, but two chains are back, so the Golden Eagles will reset. Now, center. Pringles gets off to Tillman. Tillman at the elbow. Off to Tillman. And now the Golden Eagles are reset. Lenzen picks up his dribble. Oh, almost there. Tillman sees a lane. Kicks out to Lenzen. Got it for three in the corner. And the air ball. Tillman gets the loose ball. Picks it up. No good. But they're going to run. Nice hustle by Tillman. Get that third effort. Fouls on blue. So Tillman. Has been the Gold Eagles offense in the last couple of minutes. He was one of two from the free throw line earlier. The Gold Eagles are four of eight from the free throw line for the game. So that's worth the game really in the public head. It's center. That is the free throw in and out. Now Kyle comes back in for Cascade LA. Peters comes back in for the Titans. So center is 67% free throw shooter on the year. Gold Eagles need every free throw they can get right now. Uh, second one, bounces out the rim, no good. But if you ask all the bounds, what a big deal. Peters and Blue are all by themselves. And they somehow fumbled it out of bounds instead of just one of them grabbing it. As Campbell will come in. Kind of surprised Coach Thompson didn't go to him earlier. Richard will sit down. Campbell was really an offensive spark in the first half. Bob Lenzen gets a little higher. I don't know the Tillman. Tillman, far away, 10 foot tough shot. Back there, he gets loose ball. Kicks out to Lindsay. Back there, he gets it in the low post. Backs his way in. 
Don't say that. No, no, this is the easy shot. Men's in trying to get this guy finally goes out to Matt Bailey. So several chances missed off of the Red Eagles. They knocked away by Men's in great play. Off the center. And now the Red Eagles will bring it back down by 10. Now uh, Kyle gets it over Men's in. Men's in gets it over to Kyle. In the order of Camper. Camper back in his way in, back in his way in. And he picks it up, misses his way in. Nice basket for Julian Camper. So Camper gets on the board again with his seventh point. He's the leading scorer for Pasco to Hell. Looks an eight point game once again. Now Bailey. Who comes around the screen and gets the ball. Now Walker gets over to Bailey. They're up 17 feet of a single challenge and no good. I uh, thought it fits with us. Sidney gets it. Here's Doug by Sidney. Ray and Ray. Beauty. Here's how the world misses the hair up. But he gave him a while. That's a tough point. Hancock came early. The singer could have made that way up after the foul. And he just didn't come close. But he will go back to the free throw line. That's a 15 foul on the Titans. The foul's going to add up to them. 10 33 and maybe. And then second half. Only one of four from the free throw line in the game. Gold Eagles four of ten as a team. So they need to start knocking down free throws. And a singer finally does. McCann comes back in for the Titan. And Bauer also comes back for them. Richard then really checked back into the Gold Eagles. The problem is for Singer if he can knock down his free throw. Oh, way short on the second free throw. Camper tipped it. So I make the 31 to 24. This is the closest the Golden Eagles have been since the first half. Actually, they were down six and a half pounds. So since the beginning of the second half, it's the tail of the way to the center. Oh, the way center changed the shot. So this was off the door. It puts it off the door. Very lucky break there. There's the flip of the arm. He's happy to get a dollar. We happen to be right in the right position to lay it in. That makes a nine point game again. We have 10 minutes exactly to go in the second half. Time's a waste of his camp and double team. Look back to Manson. Not center. Coleman calling for the ball. They can't get it to him. Now the paint to our car. We got to figure out how our gets it back. Center and camp for a three point and how up in that place. Nobody back as the car goes in on center. So, defended by uh, defending the air by Singer. Uh, out of bounds, unfortunately, our player had the ball, but he was out of bounds. So, the ball went back to the Titans, and we come back to this media timeout. Well, it's still going to this one. Now, it's going to be the very second half. Anything can still happen. The Casco Bowl is losing 33 to 24 on the Casco Bowl Athletics Network. Girls with curls, I don't know about you, but my hair is crazy. Finally, it's time to stop reading your curls. I have to tell you about my new best friend, Mitch Chicks. Since I could hold a brush, I've been trying to tame my choices. I never wore my hair curly. I had to use so many different products so I'd get curls. Mitch Chicks has revolutionized curly hair. They are truly the only product designed for us. Whether you're black, white, Asian, Latin, Mediterranean, or any glorious combination of them all, Mitch Chicks is for you. Now all I need is Mitch Chicks and I have soft, sexy, Fine curls that aren't heavy or sticky. Mixed Chicks is 100% vegan, completely affordable, and a very, very tough must have list. And the best news is now Mixed Chicks is available at Target. Soft, sassy, touchable curls are no longer out of reach. Pick up Mixed Chicks today at your neighborhood Target store or go to www.mixedchicks.net. I'm going to hear an in the second half. If you're just joining us, this is a, first, uh, a second half score. This is not a first half score. 33 to 24. So this is a second half score. The Gold Eagles tried 16 to 10 at halftime. Only 26 combined points. Points have picked up somewhat in the second half, as you would expect. Costa Rica is still only shooting 9 for 41 in the game. 22% to shoot 1 of 14 for three point running. Only 5 of 12 from the free throw line. So anywhere you look. They're not going to make a shot. They're much worse in the game now. After Julie Campbell, Jack Munson, Sean O'Connor, and Jordan Richards. 
So Stephen Thompson going with any combination he can find to get this thing going. There's a guy wide open. He did miss the hair up. Next to the goal, he misses the second shot as Richard challenged it. So a big bear for Costa LA. Mike Benzin. And if I go, Kent is set to stay. Now he gets the ball off the pick and roll. And he threw it down hard by Dyer and foul. Dyer can't believe it that he was holding Kent's arm. Great foul on Dyer. So he's the only player in the game in foul trouble. Let's see if he has to be taken out. As Kent goes back to the line. Well, he's going one of four. Part of those free throw struggles in the Golden Eagle. Well, let the points get away from the free throw line, and sure enough, they're missing another free throw. Porter comes in for the Titan, so Dyer will sit down. Dyer three remaining. Camper looking to bring the Golden Eagles within eight. And he does. Camper with eight points. He's the leading scorer for Cascade IA. No play on either team as he double figures. As Brock took that, who played by Walker, and as soon as I say that, Walker becomes the first player on either side to get into double figures with 12, and Stephen Thompson wants a timeout. He's very unhappy. 8.50 and 80 in the second half. UC San Diego has extended their lead back out to 36 to 25 on the Cast of the Athletics Network. for for nearly six decades, we've been the educational part of Los Angeles. Our world-class program has educated four generations of men and women who lead in their communities to innovate in their field and to inspire with their lives. Pastor LA has opened the door to the American dream for thousands of men and women to have more good place of education and our home time college field. Prepare yourself for a lifetime of learning where you can start today at Pastor LA. 8.50 remaining. Both teams have already scored more points than they did in the first half. The Titans have scored 20 points in the second half. Both Eagles have scored 15. And when the other team failed, that's not enough. As Cascade LA symbolizes the front foot after a George Richard Green camp and Sean Alcala. And Mark Wilson still out there. Mark Trimble drives inside. Perrick, great finish. Sure. Perrick gets the rebound. He goes up and he is fouled. So he will go back to the line, but the Gold Eagles have to make free throws if they're going to get to the free throw line. Stamper's only two and six for the game. Solomon Singer also two and six. Gold Eagles six of 14 from the free throw line. The Titans have only been there three times. So that should be a big advantage for Cascade LA, but they just cannot get the free throws to go in. And Camper rolls in the first free throw. Because the Gold Eagles have been on a roll from the free throw line the last couple of weeks. They've improved their season percentage all the way up to 65%. They actually came out last place in the conference at free throw shooting. But they've dipped up in tonight's effort right now as the second free throw is good. So two late free throws for Camper. Makes it 36 to 27. Down the glass. Gets it over to Walker. McCann has the ball. Richard comes out. McCann. Looking inside Tate Daly. We'll get it back to McGrath. 815 remaining. McGrath got it by Sean O'Connor. Not Porter. Richard's on him. Back to Walker. There he's in there. But after the three, gets knocked down and fired by Mark Wilson. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Gets these two attacks on the bench. He can't believe that one. Fouling a three point shooter. So that's the second foul on Wilson. So the Titans in this one tip of the line will get as many free throws as they've, as they've gotten the entire game. They get three from Hunter Walker after they've got three the entire game. Walker makes the free throw. For an unexpected source of offense off the bench for the Titans, Walker only averages two and a half points a game. Well, he plays 11 minutes on average. He's already got 13 points after those two made free throws. Looking to complete the hat trick here. Putting the Titans back a 12 point lead. 
He misses the big free throw. Wilson gets the rebound. So once again, the Golden Eagles find himself down by 11. So I said they've not been able to get a closer than seven points here in the second half. Now Kimball drives all the way. Perhaps 10 feet is no good, but he'll go to line to shoot two. So the Golden Eagles are doing a good job of getting to the line. This time the field, that's the end of what you want. You want to score points with the top stop. Kimball is a pretty good free throw shooter going to the line. He's 66% on the year. And he knocks down the first free throw. Simon Simmons comes back into the Gold Eagles, so Wilson will take a seat. So James Turman's still on the bench for the Gold Eagles. We'll see when Coach Thompson goes back to him. Maybe putting a message to his leading score. Buns are also on the bench. As the free throw is no good. Tampa gets inside with the loose ball. Goes down and scabbles. Boy, he's he's fearless. He's no foul is called. I mean, yeah, it seemed like he flipped over a play and something knocked him down. I can't believe no foul is called there. So it's a 10 point game. Tough luck there. As Blue has it in the front court. The team is being face guarded by Ray Campbell. Now McGrath gets off the quarter, back to McGrath. McGrath, looking to create some offense. Miller needs him. That's kicked back in the can. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Now the girl fakes it. Drives and then drives the other way. They're at 18 foot away. It's no good, but the guy that goes in. I said we're good at that. Hell and low and it threw the basket. So the champ is getting all the lucky bets right now. The Golden Eagles getting none, and it's 30 to 28. Now, Alcala gets it to Singer. Singer, nowhere to go. Gives out to Alcala, almost knocked away. Alcala reaches his way in. Nice pass to Singer. He blows the rim up. Tampa gets the loose ball. He is hammered and fouled by Blue. Smart foul there with the Golden Eagles still us in the free throw line. So Campbell will go back to the line. He's made a living from the line in this game. Eight times he's been there, but he's only made four. He's the first gold leader in double figures with ten points on the game. And he makes the first free throw. He only bent his knees on that one and put his legs in that free throw. So now Campbell looking to once again make it a ten point game and get the gold leader to the 30 mark. As a couple of studies, he didn't really accept in. That one rolls around no good. And a foul is called on Richard on the rebound. He pushed quarter, they said. So, second foul on Richard. That's the 14th foul on the Gold Eagles. It turns and one, but not a foul. They have nine. So, Menzin comes back in along with Tillman. See if they can do anything on offense to the Gold Eagles. As McCann being hounded by Trimble in the front court. Almost loses the ball. Gets over the blue. 6.30 remaining here in the second half. Now Rafford gets it over to Blue. Blue looking for someone to go. Got it by Singer. Blue drives left hand in the lane. Seven foot hit. Oh, good. Perry then gets the loose ball. Shot. Rafford got a foul. We're going to call it Singer, I believe. And they do. Second foul at Singer. So Porter will go back to the line. Porter missed his only two free throws earlier in this half. All six of the Titans' free throws have been in the second half. And uh, that one rolls around and in. Titans aren't exactly lighting it up from the field either. They're only shooting 37% on the game. That's great compared to the Golden Eagles. They're down to 20%. Wow. Free throws good. 9 of 45. Boy, I don't know if I've seen numbers like that. As Menzin has it in the back foot, football pushed by the Titans. Now Trimble. Look at the guy, can't find the driving line. Looks at Benny Ferrari. Then over the top of Trimble, finally, he puts it up there, he didn't quite get it in, but he's fouled. Check right there, that was a nice play, but finally get it inside. Trimble only with two points on the game. Big foul on Boo. Tillman has not made a shot. Only two punches down has been from the free throw line. 
So he'll go back there, looking to finally get the Golden Eagles their 30th point of the game, and he misses the free throw. Well, 42 to 29. Coleman makes the free throw. So it's a 10 point game. Let's see if the Golden Eagles press the full court, and they do. Now, the fan gets off the rocker. Rocker gets into the front court, gets over the blue. Now, over to the fan. Time is starting to wear thin for Cass Day LA. Now, over to the glass. The fan will reset things. Five seconds on the shot clock. Over to Rocker. Over to the blue. Benson signs the shot, but who makes it? So that makes it a 14 point game. And Stephen Thompson wants to tie out. He's seen enough. Jordan's got the biggest lead of the game. We're at 34 to 30. We're 526 remaining in this one. On the Castle of Ireland Athletics Network. Five twenty six and eight in the second half. Just to repeat, Castaway is shooting twenty percent in the game, nine of forty five. So they have not broken double digits in eight field goals. Try to keep repeating it, but that's really a story in this game. No Eagles, just not much movement on offense and no flow at all offensively. As Trimble gets to Munz and Richard post up inside. Try to put it back door to center. Singer puts up a tough shot and puts it in. Nice shot by Singer. Now football post in the can. Gets a little walker. He whips it in front of the glass. So it's not easy to break that pressure. Now the can. Drives on Munson. Picks out the walker. Well, right up in the corner for three. No good. Gets it and the ball goes over the backboard out of bounds. So it will go to Cass State LA. 451 remaining. That'll take us to a final media timeout of the game. Costco Oil is trailing UC San Diego 44 to 32 on the Costco Oil Athletics Network. Just what are you guys doing? If then you decide it did, it's I saw first guys who there's only one double double left by lunch for it. No, it's not. I called you. It's in the real Listen, there's only one way to handle this. No, 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 the is Steve Ball, Tom Curry, 900, Brandon Smith, 1,000. 4.50 on the lane in the second half. The Golden Eagles' first point goal this year of the game is 45 points on January 4th against Cascade East Bay. If you remember that game, Golden Eagles had all kinds of trouble with offensive line now, too, but even that game, they had more offensive flow than they do in this game. They're going to have to score at least that many points if they're going to win tonight. As a ball inbound, it's trying to show full court pressure. Now, Munson, looking for someone to go. Dribbles, it gives it to Simon Singer, and they're in the front court. Now, Munson over to Trimble. Back throw to Trimble, nice pass. Trimble is handled by Peters, and will go to the line. So, that's what the Titans are doing, basically. Every time, they, the few times the Gold Eagles do get it in five, instead of allowing a layup, the Titans are just firing and forcing Costello to go to go the line. Where they have not been very successful tonight. Tillman has been one of the rare players that has been well for the line so far. He's three out of four in the game. And he makes the free throw. So he has four points on the game, and all four of his points are from the free throw line. Remember, he averages over 16 points a game on the year. Second free throw is also good. 
Ten makes it 34 to 34. And on the back court, again, gets over to Dallas back in. Dallas, four fouls. Bottom of ten. Good throw to Peters. Don't leave a short to pressure. On the back, over to Peters. On the end, and a bumping foul is called on Tim, on Trimble. So he's pretty getting too much contact. So that's a 16 foul on the Golden Eagles. Second foul on Trimble, so that'll be ball out of bounds. And now the Golden Eagles are out of fouls. So every foul called on them from now on will be free throws. Peters gets back door. McCann gets after the draft instead. The draft guy by Munson. Good throw to Peters. Now McCann will reset. Titans have a full shot clock. They can just run more time down on the game clock. And uh, Peters gets over to McCann. Richard comes out. Porter cuts back there. He's double teamed. Rips right at Peters. Wide open for three. That's an air ball. Richard gets the loose ball. Sigurd trying to quickly come up. There's all the way. And he throws it up and blows the lane up. Unbelievable. Sigurd gets the loose ball. You know, it's full of the lane. It's not close. I don't know if he's going to get a foul or what. That was a very bad shot by Sigurd. After he got the loose ball. Boy, he can't have any tricks like that. Down by 10 points. Boy, I don't know how that shot by Trimble didn't go in. Now McCann gets it over to Dyer. Runs after McCann. Richard comes out. Now Porter gets back there. There we go. Throws it behind Dyer out of bounds. Of course, the big thing if you're a uh, UCC and Dillard fans, they used up almost the entire clock, shot clock. There was only three seconds left when they turned that ball over. There was only three or seven left in the game. So the Golden Eagles have no margin for error anymore. They've got to pretty much score every time down. As Tillman puts it in here and turned over. So there goes that idea. Bad pass by Tillman trying to force it in to Richard. Now McCann is trying to just run more time down. Gets it to Dyer. Now it's over to McCann. McCann gets it over to Peters. A foul is caught inside. Foul is on Tillman. So that'll be a 17 foul. So it'll be a one and one for Dyer. Dyer's only scored two points on the game. He's only played 20 minutes because of the foul trouble. And he makes the free throw. So the tags for the game are six and nine from the free throw line. They've gotten their way less than the Golden Eagles, but they've been a lot more successful. Second free throw is also good. Blue will check back in for the Titans. Guy will sit down. And uh, an inadvertent whistle as Tinger's getting on the ball. Trimble gets it. Now he plays catch with Simon Singer. Hoping to get the ball in the front court. Get off to Tillman. Oh, into the back court, and the ball is going to hit the end line. It's an over back violation. All kinds of mistakes for passing away. That's a 15th turnover of the game. And that's a lot of turnovers in a game that has not had many possessions. Now, McCann in the back court. We'll see if the Golden Eagles start fouling here pretty soon. Titans will just run down the game clock. Now McGrath gets it over to McCann. Double team gets over to Porter. Porter looking back door gets it to McGrath. He takes the three. Both teams come way out to challenge him. Now over to McCann. All the way over, he puts up the runner and puts it in. So that should just about do it for this one. As Singer has it in the front court, gets up to Munson. Both Eagles have to hurry. They do not have luxury of time. Now after Tillman, Tillman will have to shoot a three-pointer. Off the heel, no good. Fighting for loose ball. Richard goes down to get it. And a foul is called. I believe they call called a kick. So I think McCann kicked the ball. No, they did call a foul. So they called a kicking foul on Singer, I guess. Yeah. 
Boy, so if they're far on center, that'll be free throws at the other end for the Titans. Blue comes back in for the Titans. But for Austin Daniels, what's the way it turns to the Gold Eagles? 5 9 freshman from Pasadena. Tillman will take a seat, probably for the last time. So Coach Thompson realizes now this one is decided as free throws give on the glass. We'll see if he starts bringing in his other players off the bench here. As McGrath has had a pretty quiet game, he makes that free throw. Only 12 points on the game for McGrath. Now Munson throws the ball away to McGrath. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So McGrath has it knocked away and he'll stay with the Titans. And Cascade will call timeout with 122 remaining. Boy, Cascade Oil got 52 to 34 on the Cascade Oil Athletics Network. California's engineering innovations circle the globe and light the darkness. The California State University system has been enlightening promising engineers for the past five decades. Cal State LA graduate Pradesh Lodi is the founder and president of Lead Comics, a leading light emitting diode company. If you work hard, let's talk about education, the American dreams are still available there for everybody. The California State University system has been working for California for 50 years. 122 remaining, Cascade LA, failing by 18 points, the biggest margin of the game. Both Eagles are just going to have to try to regroup from this one. Tough weekend for them. Really a game they should have won yesterday that got taken away from them at the end. And then now this game tonight where just a brutal offensive showing as McCann goes underneath. Ball bumped off to Porter. Richard is there. Porter blows the layup. Munson coming the other way quickly. Off to Austin Daniels. Buck Wilson also in the game. Because they're just holding on to the ball. Wilson will just pull up for three. That's way short. Fighting for the rebound. Goes off to Dyer. So McCann takes it into the front court. They can run more time now. McCann will just waste away the rest of the clock. There is you know, a difference of about 22 seconds between shot clock and game clock, so the Golden Eagles should get the ball back one more time. Now McGrath gets it off to McCann. McCann takes the pass, gets it off to Dyer, pulls up for three. That's an air ball. Goes out of bounds. 27.5 seconds remaining. So we may have to go into the record books to see the 34 points Cascade has scored. That's a really low number, obviously. So now Austin Daniels with 17 seconds left. Puts it up. Oh, no good. So that would have been a basket, a basket for Daniels, but instead the Titans get it, and they will run out the clock. Final score at Earth Eagles last. UC San Diego defeats Castlevania 52 to 34. An embarrassing offensive sign for the Gold Eagles, quite frankly. They found with a 10 and 8, 7 and 7 in the CCAA. UC San Diego improves to 8 and 9, 7 and 7 in the CCAA. As I said, though, UC San Diego was playing really well coming into this game. So it is not a surprise that they won this game. They are one of the hottest teams in the conference. The only surprise, quite frankly, is the number of points that Costco only put up. So let's quickly get to the final stats for this one. For the Titans, they were led by Honey Walker off the bench with 13 points. Tyler McGrath was the only other player in double figures for UC San Diego. He's their leading scorer on here. He had 12. Colin Porter had 8. James McCann had 6. Drew Dyer had 4, as did Justin Brew. Brian Peters had 2 points. For Cascade LA, they were led in scoring by Julian Camper, who had 11 points. He was 5 of 10 from the free throw line. He also had 8 rebounds. Simon Singer had 8 points. James Tillman and Joshua Munson had 5 points along with Blake Trimble. But the shooting is the story. Munson only 2 of 9. Tillman only 6 and Trimble 2 of 11. No one else for Cascade LA scored. Jordan Richard, Austin Daniels, Quentin Watkins, Mark Wilson, and Chanel Kyle all went scoreless. Golden Eagles were 
Hit only 10 of 51 field goals in the game, 19.6 percent. Titans were 18 of 49, 36 percent. Golden Eagles 1 of 16 from three point range, Titans 5 of 15. Story for the Golden Eagles there the free throw line. They're 13 of 24. They got there plenty of times. They just couldn't make more than their first share. You see San Diego 9 of 12. Golden Eagles had 46 rebounds to 33, so that's one area. That was the one positive of the game, including 20 offensive rebounds. Golden Eagles had 14 turnovers to 7 for the Titans. UC San Diego outscored the Golden Eagles 18 to 5 off the bench, and points in the paint were about even. So Castro will have to regroup from this one. They'll move on and take on San, and excuse me, take on Castro Monterey Bay next weekend, and Castro East Bay. Our next broadcast here on the Castro Airflex Network will be February 15th, Friday, February 15th, when Castro Monterey takes on San Francisco State. That will be part of the last two home games of the year here at the Eagles Nest, with the Red Eagles finishing the year with six of their final eight games on the road. So, once again, this is Michael Minutes saying Cast Everly falls in a tough one to UC San Diego, 52 to 34. I'll see you in two weeks, everyone. Good night.